So, I mean, really, so we've kind of defined that. What about the platinum agent? I mean, I, we know in lung cancer, again, those of us, I don't treat, I don't treat lung cancer, or at least I haven't for a long time. I think many of us here have not. But we know there's a difference between the platinum agents, at least the theoretical difference between cis and carbo. Is there a difference, really? Do you, do you, does, would it matter, at least in triple negative disease, which one you'd use? I don't, I don't think there's any data that I'm aware of that it, it changes things too much. Obviously, carbo is maybe a little better tolerated. It's dosed on kidney function. Well, we know from Steve, Steve Isakoff's data he presented at this year's 2014 ASCO that cis had a higher response rate in um, either not pretreated or first line triple negative breast cancer. I have to say, prior to his presentation, I was routinely using carbo weekly, AUC of two, knew how to deal with that. Um, but his, his data that he presented with a near tripling, a triple increase in response rate or three times higher response rate made me really stop to think about when I'm starting someone with platinum, starting with cis. Interesting. So now we'll talk about the next case. So you have somebody who you've, say, put on a weekly taxane, be whatever it is, uh, and, you know, she, say, had liver metastases, uh, and now it's, say, six, four to six months later, say five months, and now on CT she has progression. Um, you know, what is kind of your, do you have, anybody have a go-to regimen in this setting? I'll start with Kim. How long did she say five get, to six get months. along with the tax? So she had, you, you did a scan and maybe she had a little bit of a response, you know, stable disease, which is what we normally see on these sort of things. What would you do next? Well, I think the most common choice is outside the setting of a clinical trial. So let's assume that you don't have a clinical trial, but that's a very good option for metastatic triple negative breast cancer. I'd be, the choice I'd be making is between capecitabine and aribulin at that point especially since she had a meaningful response. I don't think of her as just this nasty basal, not her, but her tumor as a really rapidly progressive resistant tumor. So my choices would be capecitabine or aribulin. We know that in triple negative breast cancer, aribulin is a better agent than CAPE in the first line setting. So I feel fairly comfortable extrapolating that second line setting that maybe aribulin is a little bit more active than CAPE. And then it really boils down to, does she want to come once every three weeks and be on an oral agent and have diarrhea? Or does she want to come two weeks in a row and have a third week off and a five minute infusion? And the hair loss at that point, she's already lost her hair. So that's probably less important in the decision-making discussion. Okay. Ruth, what do you think? Yeah, I think there are good options. I, I might lean towards a platinum-based regimen for a patient like this as well. We sometimes use gemcitabine, cisplatin is quite nice, and you know the patients do well with it. Um, so, but, but I think any of those are options, and I, I'm not sure that there's a winner out there in terms of you know, how much she's going to benefit. I think any of them are reasonable. Other things to take into account is, you know, does she have neuropathy? You know, then you might lean towards more towards capecitabine, for example. You know, how are accounts holding up? You know, ribulin's tough on on the counts. So they're the kind of things I take into account. Yeah, it's very much, um, it's very much around the toxicity and lifestyle and again discussing with the, the patient here because I don't think we have clear-cut winners. I, I have moved aribulin up. Uh, I think it's very easy to give and if you don't have, the count problem is the biggest issue I've seen. Yeah. Um, so, but earlier in line therapy because admittedly it was given later line after patients were pretty beat up and had bone marrow reserve, but in early line, it's, uh, it's very well tolerated. 